Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and while the interplanetary transfer vehicle is showing great success, the lander team is still dealing with aerodynamic issues. So we're going to try and solve this problem which causes the capsule to flip. The first obvious thing is to add more control, and the way to do this is with RCS thrusters. So as we see, we're descending through the atmosphere. The Aerodynamics of the capsule means that it wants to go nose first, so let's try and uh, right it as we fall towards the planet. I'm not getting much love yet. I've got like 16 RCS thrusters on this main stage. I put it on that stage because I really want to be able to dump them uh, as I ascend into orbit once more. But uh, yeah, this is not getting me any response at all. Uh, at most, it comes slightly off center and then it wants to go back. I um, do not have much faith in this. I hope these guys have uh, some eager brothers because it looks like we're going to be needing them in a minute. Yes. Okay. Bang. Okay. <laughs> well. So, next solution I thought I'd try is let, let's try adding some control surfaces. Now, I kind of put them on the capsule because I figured that uh, what this would be is a combination of adding uh, air resistance to the top of the rocket and obviously adding more control surfaces. I didn't end up adding them down the bottom because I think that would just compound the problem further by increasing the lateral wind resistance of the lower stages. So, you know, you see that we're, we're descending from orbit in this case much faster than the previous one. The previous one was just straight down. But this one I actually built a proper rocket for and got into orbit. So we're coming down at about 2 kilometers per second, and now we're at 33 kilometers. We are starting to hit the atmosphere for real here. This vehicle coming down is about 60-odd tons. And uh, here we go. Let's see how this, this happened. There's the doggy running in. <laughs> Very eager to get in my, uh, my uh, Audi my commentary. commentary. 17 kilometers. Uh, I, I'm manually trying to hold it this time because... Oh, there we go. Yes, we are out of control. Oh, come on. Maybe I can get... It. No. No. Uh, it is not wanting to respond, or it's kind of crazy the way it responds. Yep, I think this is a loss, but, you know, maybe we can get some more control by firing the main engine, because, as we know, the wings work better when they're traveling forward, so... Once I aero brake enough, I'm going to fire up the engine. Of course, we'll also get an extra boost from the thrust vectoring. This mission may yet be salvageable, but we will find out. Our speed has dropped to a few hundred meters per second. We're at seven kilometers up. This And this is a good time since we can get... Oh, no, we got it above the horizon for a second. We really don't want to be thrusting downwards if we can avoid it. But uh, yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. Okay, so we're moving at a couple of hundred meters per second. We're down to like four kilometers. And look, we're getting the nose consistently above the horizon. Oh, wow, look at that. We're actually, it's almost like we're getting control back. So there we are. We're almost about to hit vertical flight. There we have actually have vertical flight. So we have some control, but I can't, yeah, I can't transition from this back into flight that's sliding backwards so this is i don't know how to get this onto the ground safely um okay we're dropping again we had control for but a moment now we're gonna try again of course this is all burning up fuel that we really need to get back into space again going upwards now we somehow try to figure out how to transition back into a reverse flight and as soon as we cut the power we just lose control of this thing um just really fighting the controls here to get anything uh no oh. there okay now so we've now used up all the fuel in our descent stage this really is our vertical budget i mean if we're gonna i don't know how we're gonna land this thing now because we have no landing legs uh again it looks like we can get this going upwards fine if we want Worst comes to the worst, we could have aborted and returned to space, but you know what? If you're going to take a space capsule millions of miles to another planet, you probably want to make sure you can land it first before um, before sending it that way. I'm sure there's a solution, as hilarious as it is to try and fly this thing. Okay, look, I'm going upwards again. I'm going to just see if, if the computer can do anything with this. 
I'm just gonna what I'm gonna do is try and get it stable and then land autopilot. Oh no! Immediately it just goes nuts. Uh, that may not be the best plan. Oh, oh it, wait! It's getting vertical again. Come on! Come on! You get control there. Get control. No! Damn you, stupid computer! Uh, we're, <laughs> we must make a great sight from the ground. I tell you. This just trail of smoke and fire that is not is moving erratically. It's probably the worst uh, flight I have ever done. Oh my goodness. We're down to like a kilometer. We are really going down fast. Come on. Oh shoot. I am totally going. I, I want to get up, 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 up. Come on, 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 come on. Oh wow, the capsule survived. This, maybe this will work after all. Nope. <laughs> Hit the ground at 67 meters per second. Well, okay, so my next solution was to say, hey, let's put giant wings in the capsule to modify its air, or to add more aerodynamic drag. As you can see, um, that didn't work. Again, with, you know, what we want is something passively stable, something that will point backwards regardless of what happens. Yeah, down to it. So let's try firing up the engines to see if we can get anything. See if those wings will give us any lift. Uh, nope. We're just looking like a giant space-born hammerhead shark or something. And uh, hammerhead sharks do like to uh, like the water, I guess. And that's probably what this one is thinking. Bye-bye. Uh, okay, what else can we do? Well, we have uh, parachutes. We could try fixing parachutes to the capsule and seeing if that will flip the vehicle around as we are doing here. So now we don't really need to cushion the entire landing with parachutes. We just need one that will, you know, hold it. We, you know, we just need a couple so that it'll, it'll hold it vertical, right? Maybe we can even get the drag we need when they're not deployed. You know how there's a partially deployed phase where they don't really offer much drag and then there's a fully deployed phase where they go to like a drag of 500 or something. So I'm hoping, right, as we see, it's starting to flip over. I'm hoping the parachutes will deploy. There we go. I'm hoping those will pull it vertical. And it doesn't look like they will. Well, um, that isn't going to work. Maybe once we get to like 500 meters, the fully opened parachutes will give us enough control. I mean, at that point, we will be very close to the ground and moving relatively quickly. Let's, let's see if we can get anything from the engine. No, nope, no thrust vectoring. Not really helping us very much. And really, we are moving down really slowly. The whole rocket is going to pile into this capsule here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that didn't work. So, uh, yeah, I really had run out of solutions at this point for this rocket design. So what I came up with was part editing. I went in and I modified the values for the large capsule to be the same as those for the small capsule. And suddenly everything works beautifully. I left the, the parachute on there for good measure. <laughs> um, yeah, look, this is going to be an entirely computer-driven landing and no intervention from me. And we're going to demonstrate that this still does in fact land from orbit if we use the modified parts. And so I would honestly suggest that the game modify these parts by default because I don't want to have to be coming up with crazy crackpot solutions. Actually, I do because coming up with crackpot solutions makes for cool videos. I'm, and I, I think there's still a way to solve this without modifying parts. And I shall endeavor to find it. I also think that this rocket design is probably too heavy. I, I did some, some number crunching based on the size of my interplanetary transfer vehicle. And uh, this one is has two problems. First of all, it's really, it is very heavy. And those engines, the main engine is heavy and the second engine is, is okay. But the, so we need to put a bunch of fuel on it to get it to transfer. But the question is, what kind of engine do I use for that interplanetary transfer? And the large engine is the obvious choice in this design. You know, we could just strap fuel tanks around it. But the large engine is not designed for use in a vacuum. It doesn't get nearly as good specific impulse as the smaller engines. 
and you would really like that extra extra boost. I mean, it's like 10%, and, and a 10% boost to your fuel efficiency is a huge difference. Um, also, that engine is heavy, and we have two a second engine in there that doesn't really do anything until we're in orbit. I, I honestly think that there is scope to redesign this vehicle and make it smaller and perhaps come up with a legitimate solution to this aerodynamic issue. There we go, there's the parachute opening. Uh, it doesn't slow as much, but uh, I guess it is offering a small boost to our, or a small reduction to our fuel needs, hopefully to offset its mass. I've attached it to a decoupler so that when we land on the surface, we can jettison it. There we go, we're dropping it away because it was moving us slightly to the left. You see how slowly it lands compared to me. But look, there we go. We've used up uh, used up one and a quarter fuel tanks, and we are basically on the ground. How beautiful is that? And of course, we could then perform our you know interplanetary missions, and now let's test the return to space, see if we have enough fuel left after this. And of course, it's time for uh, time accelerating this whole thing. So we're basically aiming to get back into orbit and uh, have our uh, pilots be in a position that they can be rescued. If so, this is a viable design. A viable design, assuming that uh, part editing is okay. But uh, yeah, I think it is a sane part edit. <laughs> there we go. Look, no problem. You see, most of the thrust is coming from that uh, first stage. Once we get into orbit, we're going to use this small one. And, you know, at this point, it's only going to get one kilometer per second. I know for a fact this has more than one kilometer per second uh, delta V on it. In fact, it will probably have enough to return to the surface. And since we have edited the capsule stats, it'll be able to land as well on its rocket motor. So I think successful test. And uh, But I shall still seek a proper solution to this, and that we will see in later videos. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.